welcome back so previous video we went with the management here we'll be focusing on some important concepts so firstly we'll be discussing on how to deprive debridement of ulcer so under debridement of ulcer what we need to know is it is the removal of d vitalized tissue and other thing to note is the small ulcers it can be deprived deprived in the ward whereas large should be operated and all the dead devitalized the dead devitalized and the necrotic tissue are removed and the slough should be separated adequately before deprivement to be removed and the enzymes like collagenase are used for deprivement so the enzyme such as collagenase are used and often devitalized tissue separates on its own by autolysis so the phenomenon of autolysis can occur as well as the hydrotherapy can be done hydro therapy and dressing can be done so in short to conclude uh, with these points deprivement can be has the following steps that is surgical mechanical can be autolytic or can be enzymatic just to summarize this how the deprivement of ulcer it is nothing but the removal of devitalized tissue and in case if it's small this can be cured in ward large it needs to be operated in case of dead and devitalized and necrosed tissues are removed that is a uh, involved in the procedure and the slough should be separated adequately so this slough it is separated adequately before deprivement other point to note is the enzyme collagenase is used and again there's autolysis mechanism and um, hydrotherapy and dressing is also done they are nothing but the mechanical method in short this is in the summary there is surgical or mechanical methods there is autolytic method and enzymatic method that is collagenase now moving ahead to an another concept this is known as dressing so dressing will be done but the question is why so it the it keeps it moist ulcer is moist then the surrounding is dry that is the skin next the decreases the pain then it also soothes the tissue it protects wound and also acts as an absorbent for the discharge so repeating dressing is done to keep the ulcer moist surrounding tissues skin dry reduces the pain soothes the tissue protects the wound and acts as absorbent for the discharge now just looking at the type of dressings so 
dressing and here we'll be looking at the types so there is cotton dressing there is paraffin dressing there is poly urethane dressing this is given in case of clean wounds there is al genates nothing but cv dressing there is also type 1 collagen dressing so this includes hemostasis proliferation of fibroblast also increases the blood supply next there is also a concept of foam dressing under foam dressing it is highly adsorbent decreases the wound maceration and decreases the frequency of dressing so this is nothing but the hydrophilic poly urethane foam next there is the hydrocolloid dressing and uh, this is nothing but to separate the slough and autolysis of dead tissues next there is also hydrocolloid also transparent film dressing and it acts as waterproof and it permits oxygen as well as water vapor across and prevent contamination next there is hydrogel dressing so just to know the names i'll just be telling a uh, dressing there is cotton dressing and it is cheap and mainly used for traumatic and paraffin dressing is also there there is also polyurethane dressing there is also alginate dressing and uh, type 1 collagen dressing that is hemostasis and it can cause hemostasis proliferation of fibroblast as well as improves the blood supply so this is with the collagen one dressing next foam dressing under that there is highly absorbent that is decreases in wound uh, decreases the wound maceration reduces the frequency of dressing there is hydrophilic polyurethane foam next there is hydrocolloid dressing helps in separation of slough and autolysis of dead tissue then transparent film dressing which is nothing but there is waterproof and uh, uh, they permit of uh, water vapor and oxygen and prevent the contamination there is another concept of hydrogel dressing and this is used in case of clean wounds there was another which was used in clean wounds that is polyurethane dressing this is also in clean wounds this as well hydrogel dressing in clean wounds now moving on to another very important topic that is the causes of formation of the non healing ulcer so this topic is the chronic or 
non healing ulcer so the causes so under this there is local causes and concept of general okay so under local causes there is re current infection and there is trauma as well due to presence of foreign body there is absence of rest so there is no rest or no immobilization and there is poor blood supply as well as there is hypoxia there is edema loss of sensation there is also periostitis or osteomyelitis osteomyelitis and there is fibrosis as well of the surrounding tissue and there is lymphatic disease now just to repeat the local causes it can be due to the recurrent infection can be due to trauma as well as in case of no rest or no immobilization poor blood supply hypoxia in case of edema of that part loss of sensation and uh, peris per periostitis osteomyelitis of the underlying bone fibrosis of the surrounding tissue as well as lymphatic disease now just looking at the general under general there is it can be due to or specific it can be due to anemic or hypo proteinemia next it can be due to vitamin deficiency it can be due to tb or leprosy diabetes mellitus and hypertension chronic liver disease or chronic kidney disease steroid therapy and cytotoxic chemotherapy therapy or radiotherapy as well as there is malignancy okay just to repeat you spoke about general causes it can be due to anemia anemic or hypoproteinemia can be due to vitamin deficiency in case of tb or leprosy diabetes mellitus hypertension chronic liver disease or chronic kidney disease in case of steroid therapy and cytotoxic or chemotherapy radiotherapy as well as in case of malignancy so thank you and uh, we'll be continuing further in the next part thank you